Hello everyone, how's everybody doing? I hope you're doing fine. And as you know, I'm on vacation. And I'll probably be back next week, uh, or at the end of this week. And so uh, today we're going to have a little uh, powwow here, a good get-together. Yeah, get we're going to be discussing, hopefully, um, some interesting subjects. And so let's get to it. <clears throat> uh, last week we covered uh, subject matter, which was um, objects. What is an object? And we had a little bit of problems with, um, with the differences of opinion that people have out there. Most people use essentially the uh, notion of object of ordinary speech. That's the problem. And so how did I start? Well, I started by saying that we need this, which, what, which is what I call the golden principle, the golden principle of physics. Physics requires an object. You can't do physics without an object. What does that really mean? It means that, essentially, right, that you cannot move a concept. You cannot say you're going to move a concept in, uh, in physics. And you cannot, yeah, you know, you can only move objects. That's that's the bottom line. That's the big one. Okay. And what we've been doing for maybe the last 400 years is been moving concepts. Uh, we've been transferring energy, which is not a physical object. We've been moving a mass, mathematical concept. Um, we've been um, uh, we've been um, working with particles, which are not particles. They're um, vibrations of fields, bundles of energy, you name it. Anything but a physical object. And so, and uh, space-time, we've been bending space-time, okay? So the explanations, the physical interpretations that we've, we've had from mathematical physics, from the so-called scientific establishment, uh, are devoid of objects. So the question is whether any of those physical interpretations, you know, uh, relate to physics, okay? if that's science. Okay, so, uh, so um, the word object, you know, I defined it as that which has shape. Very simple. And you would think, well, that's a very simple definition. Certainly, someone in the last 10,000 years <laughs> has already figured that one out. I mean, how, how complicated can that be? And it turns out that nobody has. In the last 10,000 years, no one has figured out that an object is that which has shape. And again, you know, you can go to any uh, physics textbook and you won't find any of them that begin by defining the word object even though, as the golden principle just said, you need an object to do physics. So you would think that the first thing that someone, a physicist, would define, uh, Newton, Einstein, you name it, you know, Bohr, Heisenberg, the first thing that they would do is define the word object and then continue and build upon that. No one has done that. Okay? No one has defined the word object. And so what we have today in uh, official so-called physics, mathematical physics, science, is uh, an informal term. And that's what people use, informal terms. Okay? Now, um, just to give you an idea of where I stand on the word object, I have a little saying, and I say that the definition of the word object destroys all religions. Let me say that again. The definition of the word object destroys all religions. And you might say, well, how so? And I'll give you an anecdote to show you how powerful that definition is. Okay? Again, you don't have to believe me. I just want you to understand the argument. Okay? I was in Aberdeen, um, Scotland. I was giving a dissertation over there in one of the uh, universities. And I met a, a group of Palestinians, Muslims. And as all, you know, uh, Muslims, you know, they, they try to get across their religion. 
And we went to dinner all together. There were like five or six of them and uh, very nice people. And we started talking about religion. And so I asked them at one point and I said, is God in, uh, uh, does God have shape or does God lack shape? Very simple question. You know, is, is there a shape? Does he, does God have a shape? I mean, it's a black or white uh, type of question, I, I would think, right? <laughs> well, one guy answered, I remember a couple answers. That's what I want to share with you. Uh, uh, the first one guy answered, he said, uh, well, if I knew what God looked like, God wouldn't be so great. Okay, that's not the first time I had heard that, you know, and, uh, but that is a standard reply that you will get out there, right, from people who, uh, who are religious, right, who believe in God and so on. Okay, so they'll give you this kind of uh, answer. And it's a cop-out. Uh, they haven't answered the question. I'm asking simply, is, does God have shape or doesn't have shape? You're God. How, how do you visualize God? You know, when you sleep, when you pray, whenever, whatever you do, uh, what do you think of God? And, you know, so by saying that, well, if I knew what God looked like, uh, you know, he, he wouldn't be so great. And I'm not asking if God has a beard, blue eyes, you know, a magic wand in his hand. I'm not asking that. All I'm asking, all I'm asking, does God have shape? God doesn't have shape. If he doesn't have shape, the problem is that he's an abstract concept. There is no he. God becomes a concept because that which has shape is an object. That means God is not an object. God is a concept. And so these people end up praying to a concept. Okay, so there's a big danger. No matter how they answer, they're going to lose. <laughs> they're going to have a problem, okay? Now, another fellow answered. He said, um, he said, um, you know, um, what was it? He had answered what? He said, um, because I asked him if he, if, if he prayed to a concept, right? And, and that's where they r realized what the question was about. They, they, they were able to see deeper, you know, what the issue was. You know, if God is an object, uh, he can create things. We can talk about a he. But if God is a concept, you know, I mean, w w what is God? <laughs> Just a concept? And it turns out all concepts were invented by man. All concepts. We've invented the concepts. And so that would put uh, God in a position where God uh, does not, you know, is, is a creation of ours. But then there was another problem, and that was the problem of existence. We can only talk about the existence of objects in physics. And that was another big problem for them because, you know, does a concept exist? Well, in ordinary speech, we say love exists. Uh, intelligence exists. Data exists. You know, we use all concepts and we say they exist. But we don't have a, a, a definition of, of the word exist to fit in with that statement. In physics, it's very simple. Only objects can exist. So if, uh, if God is not an object, if God does not have shape, God does not exist by definition. And so when I pointed all this out to them, that's when they realized what the, what the question was about. <laughs> that's when they came back and they said, oh, oh I, see, I see what the question is. Okay. Anyways, um, uh, why am I raising this? Well, today I'd like to deal, I, I'd like to start with the word exist. We're going to be dealing with the word exist probably in the next two or three sessions because I'm not sure I can get it done today. And I'm going to be dealing specifically with Ayn Rand. She was a philosopher, and she was an atheist, by the way, okay? And, um, and she uh, defined some words, among them the word object, the word exist, the word knowledge, several words which we use in physics. And so I'd like to address some of those issues and show the contrast between Ayn Rand and myself. And uh, some people made comments saying, you know, that they thought that she was... Uh, uh, you know, essentially saying the same thing as I did, but in different words. That's what they were saying. And I've been, uh, you know, over the years, the last 10 years at least, many people came around and said, yeah, you said the same thing as Ayn Rand. 
And uh, no, I didn't. So <laughs> if people think that I said something similar, even remotely similar to Ayn Rand, well, we got to clarify those issues. I got to show the contrast between Ayn Rand and myself because I don't agree with Ayn Rand in absolutely nothing. Okay, so, so we got a problem. Someone's not understanding what Ayn Rand said or what I said. Okay, one of the two. It can't be both. Okay, so I'd like to address that. But anyways, there was a comment before that, and uh, this had to do with the word object. Again, you know, um, uh, I put it as that which has shape. And this individual, he put this comment. He said, he said, I'm going to just blurt out what comes to mind. Listening to this soap salesmanship, okay? <laughs> Is my shadow an object because it has shape? And it's a question many people have asked. A lot of people want answers to. I mean, if you're going to say shape, is a shadow an object? Okay. I think it's a valid question because at least lots of people have that question. So I think at least we need to answer it, right? Okay. Uh, in my uh, opinion, form is a better qualifier, but I guess that's not new and improved by the speaker. Moi. And uh, would allow the first step of a soap sale, trashing existing ideas. Yeah, I'm going to be trashing existing ideas because they're not scientific. That's the reason. So getting back to the question, is a shadow an object? Because shadow would seem to have shape, right? Okay, so here's uh, my answer to that, and I did cover this in the past, but I'm going to go over it one more time, okay? And that's what an object is not, okay? This is what an object is not, okay? And here's the list, and I just want to point to uh, the last one there on, on my list. An object is not... Uh, it, uh, it, it, an object is not that which is not standalone. In other words, an object, in order to be an object, has to be the only object in the universe, has to stand alone. If God created a box and then he disappeared, that box is the only object in the world, in the universe, then that box, made of a single piece, by the way, uh, then that box is an object. Why? Because that's the way we present objects in physics. We point and name. Uh, we point and say table, okay? And uh, that's an object. And you point and you say um, door or chair or whatever. You can point and name. And so now the ET, the extraterrestrial, he understands our language. He begins to understand our language. He says, okay, I know what a table is now because he pointed and he made this sound called table. Or maybe I wrote the word and he read it and he said, okay, that's a table. Okay, but I point and name. But it's got to be a standalone object. And the question is whether the shadow stands alone. Have you ever seen a shadow without the tree? Have you seen a shadow without the house? Have you seen a shadow without you or a rock or whatever? Uh, you know, a dog or whatever creates the shadow. Or light coming in there. Let me show you a, a shadow. I'm going to show you a 3D shadow here. Several of them, in fact. It's known as a hologram. This is a shadow, okay? It's a 3D shadow. It's a projection. Now, you say, well, I see a shape in there, so it looks like that's an object. I see a bunch of shapes there. But see, the, the little uh, creatures there, all these things that they're showing you there, all those are objects. You know, here's uh, Princess Leia. I think her, is, that's her. And here's an ant or whatever that is, a turtle. <laughs> Uh, here's a jet, okay? All these are objects. A jet is an object, and that is an object. I'm saying the hologram is not an object. A shadow is not a, an object. Shadow is, is, a, is a projection of light, and so is a hologram. So the question is uh, not whether, uh, you know, the objects that you see there, the ones that have shape, whether those are objects. The question is whether hologram, whether the word hologram represents an object, whether the word shadow represents an object. That's the issue. And no, a shadow is not because any shadow is a projection of something else and does not stand alone. Any hologram is not an object, the hologram itself, okay? The pixels, <laughs> essentially, you know, Superman is an object. Superman is a figure. It has shape. 
but the projection on the screen, you know, the real objects are the pixels, the colors, you know, the screen, those are the objects. Those are the ones, in fact, that have location. Each one of them, I can establish a distance with respect to my chest, okay? But Superman, out there, there's no, no physical object called Superman, standalone object called Superman. Superman is a projection, like all cartoons. Uh, I don't know, Sylvester, the cat, uh, Bugs Bunny. Those are not objects. Uh, those are objects, but not... But, but the projection, the, the image that you get there is a projection of light. That's the one we're talking about. We're talking about the shadow, the hologram, okay? The image that you're projecting. That's what is not an object. And, you know, some people have trouble wrapping their brain up around that, but that's the issue we're talking about. Shadow is not a standalone object. But is there a shadow of a tree? If I put a shadow of a tree on the wall and say, tree... Yeah, that object, that shadow there, if I call it tree, then it's an object. But if I call it shadow, it's not an object. Make sense? Think about it. Okay, so that's the first issue. Okay, now um, here I have uh, uh, this uh, lady, Ayn Rand, and I put her on a list like, the other day. And it was, uh, she was uh, next to the last there, Ayn Rand, 1905-1982. And I said, none of these philosophers, from Confucius all the way to Simone de Beauvoir, and uh, obviously I just picked out a, a, probably among the most famous philosophers throughout history that dealt with the subject in one way or another. Some were physicists, some were philosophers, and they tried to figure out, well, what is an object? What, is, what do we mean by exist? And uh, they never figured it out. In fact, uh, it's uh, David Hume and Immanuel Kant. Uh, the two on the right uh, there at the top uh, who specifically stated the, the problem. They could not figure the difference, figure out the difference between object and exist. Okay, and I covered that, a uh, couple statements that they made in their books, their respective books, in which they could not tell the difference between an object and existence. Because a lot of people are thinking that a thing is what we call thing, things in ordinary speech, things that we see every day, we bump against, we touch. So we have this notion of see, touch, and we say, well, you know, I can touch a table, that's an object. You know, and uh, I can touch a chair, so we have no problem there. The problem comes when you get objects that you cannot see, like air. You say, well, that's not an object. Yeah, but you can touch it. You know, you, you move your hand and you feel something, and we call that thing air. And so are we going to dismiss it because we can't see it? Is that the criteria we're going to use, see? And then you have, uh, you know, you have um, uh, objects such as tri-bar or even a square, any two-dimensional object, Superman, two-dimensional figure, right, image. And you can see it. Uh, but, you know, you can't really touch a square because it's not, it doesn't exist, it's not here. And so you're going to dismiss it because you can't touch it. You can see it, but you can't touch it. Air, you can touch it, but you can't see it. Are those the criteria we're going to use? Well, obviously, those are not universal criteria, especially the table I'm thinking of, the one that I have in my brain, you know, what I'm imaging and I can see and I can draw for you, right? So, so that you know what I'm talking about, you know, you can't see or touch the table that I have in my he head. Well, is that table the one I'm, I'm dreaming of is, or thinking of? Is that an object? Is the word table, does the word table refer to an object? Always, anywhere in the universe. Table on the other side of the universe, is that an object? Does the word table refer to that which is an object? Yeah, of course, always. Table is always an object. Okay? Why? Because it has shape. That's why it belongs to the list of words that refer to that which has shape. That's why it's an object. So if someone says a rope. Oh, you're doing rope, uh, in my case, you know, the rope model. And they say, well, you're doing it with concepts because I can't see, I can't touch the rope, so it's, an, it's a concept. No, that's not the criteria. Uh, or the criterion. You know, right? No, a rope 
anywhere in the universe, anywhere, anytime you use the word rope, you're referring to an object. Okay? So uh, these people never figured that out. They thought that objects were only those things that exist, and they started confusing object with exist. They got ahead of themselves. Before defining object, they were already at the point where they were saying, well, if it doesn't exist, it's not an object. No, no, that comes later. We, we're not there yet. We're not at the word exist yet. We're still fighting. We're still struggling with the word object. we got to define that first. That's the first word you need to define. So, yes, I stand by my statement. Uh, the word um, object destroys all religions. Once you define the word object as shape, lots of people have problems because now you got space-time. Well, is space-time an object? Well, what does it look like? What is the shape of space-time? Well, what is, the, what is the shape of time, let alone space-time? And no, they put it beyond our reach. They say, well, it's, uh, we cannot imagine space-time because it's four-dimensional, a four-dimensional object. Well, I just want time, that, that one leg, you know, what does time look like? You're going to bend time, you're going to say you're going to warp time. What does time look like before you warp it? That's what I, I want you to draw it. I want to see what you have in your mind, okay? Um, field? Is a field an object? Can you bring a field? Magnetic field will do, you know. Can you bring a magnetic field to the conference and put it in the middle of the room and show us a field and we can look at it from every side? We can see, oh, I see what a field is now. Is the field a standalone object? Can you bring the field without the magnet and put it in the middle of the room? What are you going to put? <laughs> it's a dependent object dependent you know it's got to be independent this one's not independent it's dependent depends on the magnet that's one issue the other one's invisible untouchable also so under the c touch criteria you still would not be able to qualify a uh, field as a physical object so all these words that they that people use as objects they treat them as objects are not really objects they're concepts which people have reified concretized, you know, they made them into something concrete, and they treat them as physical objects. They start moving them around, they push them, they squash them, they stretch them. That's the problem. Okay. Okay. Uh, some people made uh, a couple comments. Again, uh, I've had comments about Ayn Rand over the years, and here's one comment, okay, <clears throat> uh, that came up lately, and one visitor said, Rand herself was a the very least close to saying the same thing as you just expressed in different terms uh, no <laughs> absolutely not we got a problem there and I'm gonna clarify all that right science studies concrete objects no and I made that same error in the past I corrected it so I want people to be clear on that uh, the word studies is a problem science doesn't study anything you can study all year and not know anything. You cannot explain a single thing. You can, uh, you know, study birds. You can study for the test and fail the test. So is studying science? Studying is the wrong word to use to, to define science. Science is not about studying. Science is about explaining. You need to explain something. That's how you show that you know, okay? And does it study concrete objects? Well, uh, not, not according to uh, the new version of science that we have now, okay? Uh, the new version of science says the following here, okay? Science is divided into two branches. Science is about explaining rationally, and there's two branches. One is physics, the other one is philosophy. Physics studies objects and causes and mechanisms, and philosophy deals with concepts and uh, uh, deals with reasons and purpose. So we don't just uh, study, we explain, okay? And in the case of physics, yeah, you need objects, concrete objects, that's physics. But in philosophy, we don't use objects. Philosophy, we need to know why someone did someone uh, something, uh, the reasons. It could be psychiatry, it could be history, Okay, you can talk about why Napoleon went to uh, Waterloo, you know, in 1815. What was the uh, what, what went through his mind? What was his purpose? Okay, so that's an explanation. Different people have different theories. Okay, um, Ayn Rand then continues, and she says objectivism. That's that's what her philosophy is known as. 
She placed too much emphasis on mathematics, unlike you. Yeah, and that's the problem because, as you see in the next statement, many OIS, many uh, objectivists, right, are indoctrinated by the modern physics of quantum. See, if, uh, if, um, if you make emphasis on mathematics, you end up with quantum mechanics, which is an irrational theory. Why? Because the explanations are irrational. Okay? So the issue here is that uh, when you introduce mathematics into science, uh, you end up with, especially into physics, right? You end up with irrational explanations because mathematics has nothing to do with science or with physics. Mathematics is just a description. A math an equation is just an, a description. And that's not what science is. And science is what? An explanation. It's not the study of, no, it's an explanation. You have to explain something. Whether you philosophy or physics, you got to explain something. That's how you you know, that, that's where, where science vibrates. That's where you use your brain. So mathematics ended up with quantum mechanics, and quantum mechanics tells you some weird things like, you know, a particle can be at two places at once. Uh, decoherence. What is that? What do you mean a particle can be at two places at once? And uh, then uh, this visitor also said, you are doing epistemology, whether you like it or not. No. I'm not doing epistemology, epistemology. I'm not doing ontology. I'm not doing philosophy. That's not what I'm doing. Let's get it right. Let's at least understand what I'm trying to do here, okay? That's important. What I'm trying to do is lay the foundations of physics. That's different. Every discipline has to have a foundation, okay? You have to have the words uh, to do law. You need to know maybe what crime is or what stealing is, or what punishment is. To do medicine, you might need to know what disease means, or, or what uh, you know, illness means, or what cure means. In physics, we need to lay the foundations. The foundations is first that you need an object, and then you have all those words right underneath there, something, nothing, concept, distance, location, exist, and motion. Those are sine qua non words that you need to define for the purposes of physics. So, no, I'm not doing uh, philosophy here. This is, has nothing to do with philosophy. It has to do with laying the foundations for physics so that we can explain how Mother Nature runs her shop. That's what it's about. Okay? And then uh, this person continued and said, um, let's see if I can get it here. Let me get this one out. This person says the following. says, um, Ayn Rand just wasn't a def as definite as you about exist an object. No kidding. <laughs> Certainly wasn't at all. In fact, she didn't define object, and because she didn't define object, did not know what an object was. Uh, she ended up not knowing what exist means. And, you know, she talked a lot about existence, as, I, as you, I'll show in, in a little while, right? Probably not today, but <laughs> next couple times I will be talking about existence quite a bit. And it did make the distinction between existence and that which is product of consciousness, concepts. No, because, in fact, this same person later on says uh, that uh, concepts exist. So she did not make a distinction. And I'm going to go over that as well. Uh, Ayn Rand did not, was not able to zero in on the difference between a concept and an object. Not that precisely. And because of that, she did end up saying that concepts do exist because she was using the um, definition of ordinary speech, the informal definition of exist. She had no real definition of the word exist, and we'll get to that. Okay. Uh, here's another uh, couple comments, also by a couple people, and it says um, you do understand, uh, you do not understand her, and likely refuse. To, for political reasons. <laughs> Swallowed a lot of smears against her, calling her a narco-capitalist. I'll get over, the, I'll get to that as well, okay? That is downright irrational and subjective. Given your past uh, communist beliefs, it is no surprise. Now, yeah, uh, I want to clarify, I was a communist for at least 20 years of my life and throughout my youth, essentially, and um, I got out of that. I'm no longer <laughs> a communist by no means, but, uh, and I laugh up my youth. You make errors when you're young, and that's 
one of the years I committed, I confess, okay? But no, it's the, uh, what I'm going to talk about, uh, Ayn Rand is, has nothing at all to do with politics, believe me, and, and I'll, I think I'll clarify that in the next, you know, whenever I get to them, right? Uh, not really sure why you are having such a strong reaction against her. Well, I'm having a strong reaction because uh, I disagree with everything that Ayn Rand said. Uh, and not with respect to politics. She did a lot of politics and economics, that sort of thing. I'm not talking so much about that. I'm going to talk about how her foundations for physics uh, were not, you know, they're, they're uh, made, uh, they were set on quicksand. She was building this on quicksand. That's what. That's how she built her structure. Okay, and again, I'll get to all that. I'll go one by one. I'm just setting now the the tone, the uh, the what the issues are. Okay, so that's that's the point right now, and um, and uh, narco cap. That's got to do with anarcho capitalism, and for short, I call it narco cap. Okay, and I got a couple friends. Uh, uh, Shamu and Dave, and they beat me up on that because they are narco caps, and we do have a lot of <laughs> the, the debates with them on uh, the new wave. This is the Austrian school of economics, and uh, how free will uh, enters the decisions of humans, or should enter the decisions of humans. How you have to get government off your back and have, uh, you know. Um, essentially free will, the free will to think whatever you want, say whatever you want, trade whatever you want without having the government come in there and tax you and compel you and put a gun to your head and that sort of thing. And yeah, I have a lot to say about that, but I don't want to do, get into too much politics because I really do physics, okay? But that's what narco cap refers to, okay? And right off, I can see you have strong feelings against laissez, uh, laissez-faire uh, capitalism. Uh, I'll talk a little bit about that. Uh, I have no problem with laissez faire. It's got, uh, it's really a different angle altogether. So it's got nothing to do with that. I, I got as much against laissez faire capitalism as I have against communism as I get have against any political system today. I don't care what political system you are, I'm against it. Okay, and I'll get to that. And then uh, I think another fellow says here, I suspect you and her have very different political views. Yeah, uh, a, a little bit. <laughs> we differ a little bit with Ayn Rand, okay? And I said, but you, uh, but you and her have several agreements on, say, metaphysics. That's where I want to get to. No, we don't. We have no commonality whatsoever on metaphysics, on what is known as metaphysics, okay? And here's a definition of metaphysics to put that into the proper context, okay? This is. Uh, um, I think I got this either from uh, the Wikipedia or from uh, dictionary.com, one of those two. The branch of philosophy, okay, right there, we, we're talking about philosophy, I don't do philosophy, that deals with the first principles of things. No, the first principles of things are the foundations of physics, okay, if we're going to talk about things. Uh, the first principle is that you need an object, that's the first principle, and uh, metaphysics uh, has nothing to do really with that. Uh, essentially, they treated metaphysics equal to epistemology, equal to philosophy, and no, I don't do philosophy. I set the, uh, the foundations of physics, including abstract concepts such as being, knowing, identity, time, and space, uh, except for space, which uh, somehow enters the uh, realm of physics, uh, not really, you know, only as a contrast, right? Being, knowing, identity, and time have nothing at all to do with anything. We don't use those words in science. Sorry. Okay, so anyone who uses being, knowing, identity, time, consciousness, anything like that, we get rid of. We we have no, we don't deal with those things at all. They would regard the question of the initial conditions for the universe as belonging to the realm of metaphysics or religion. Yeah, metaphysics is religion. That's what metaphysics is. Anyone doing metaphysics is doing religion. You either do foundations of physics or you do religion. And then you have uh, abstract theory with no basis in reality. That's what uh, metaphysics is. So as you can see, um, you know, uh, none of that pertains to me. I don't do metaphysics. Now, people like to call it metaphysics. They got that word from Aristotle, you know. Uh, uh, his book is, uh, one of his books is known as metaphysics. And that's like a philosophy. That's what they, throughout the ages, they considered it philosophy. 
And again, they're dealing with the foundations of physics, which they never established. So, so this is the issue. The issue, we need to clarify all that very carefully because that's where the problem is. You know, if, if you're going to write a book, for example, on physics and you don't lay the foundations, you know, you're not going to have good physics. Your, your, your theories are going to be screwed up. And then uh, you can say, well, that's philosophy, that's ontology, that's epistemology, and that's metaphysics. No, no, you need to lay the foundations like you would for medicine, for law, or for any other uh, discipline. You need to lay the foundations of the discipline. And I, I got a good example. One of them is biology. You know, a lot of people uh, say, oh, bio I'm a biologist, you know, they, they say. No, they, they can't be a, a biologist on planet Earth, not today, because they never define what life is. Nobody knows how to define the word life. And so I had to go in there, I'm not a biologist, but I had to define the word life for them. And so, yeah, we got, we got a problem because these people, without defining the, the foundations of their discipline, they just start ranting and they just go in there and they say, okay, let me talk to you about biology. How can you talk to me about biology if you don't know what life is and biology is the study of life? How can you be a biologist? And this is the issue. The issue is that we need to uh, uh, lay the foundations for each discipline. That's not called philosophy. That's called laying the foundations of the discipline. And that's what we do for physics. So no, I don't do metaphysics. I don't use the, I despise the word. I hate to be called a metaphysicist. <laughs> and so on, you know, I mean, you know, what is that? No, I lay the foundations, period, for the discipline. It's for physics. We're done, you know. Okay. Uh, here's another comment. Again, uh, all of this is to put it all of the discussion within uh, the proper context. Okay. Let me get in here. Um, uh, the comment said, she was a philosopher, referring to Ayn Rand, right? Therefore, she dealt with concepts. Okay. Uh, yeah, philosophers deal with concepts. Uh, is that an excuse? <laughs> Uh, her theory of concepts begins with perceptual level entities. Perceptual? In science, we don't perceive anything. We kill the observer. Science functions like a mafia. The first we, thing we do is we kill the witness. There are no witnesses, no observers in science. We have to run the unit. We have to explain how Mother Nature runs the universe in, in, in the physics branch, right? And we have to look at it as a clockwork universe. We have to get rid of living th entities. We have to get rid of us and all animals, all, anything, plants also. Get rid of anything that's alive. That way it doesn't distract you. We need to explain how the universe works without any living entity giving you its testimony. It's when we introduce perceptual that we get into trouble. See, touch, hear, uh, taste, smell. Is that, is that what makes the universe run? Uh, it's whatever I hear, it's whatever I see, whatever I can touch. Is that how the universe runs? Well, that is for you. How about for me? Uh, you know, you touched God. I didn't. So you believe in God. I don't believe in God. And who's right now? So the problem is introducing an observer. We got to get rid of the observer. We got to know if God exists independent of the observer. If I need to believe in God for God to, to exist, then God's got a problem because the day I die, God dies with me, right? I mean, you know, he existed only because I believed in him. <laughs> we have to know what exists independent of life because it's the word life, you know, the living entities that get in the way. We put the observer in there and say, well, what did you see? What did you think? Well, I don't know. I was on drugs that day. You know, I had uh, cocaine in my system. So I had all these dreams and I saw, all the, I saw reality. No, you didn't. You had something in your brain. <laughs> you know, I mean, you got to look at it in that way. You got to remove the observer. Remove the observer. Whenever, whenever in doubt, remove the observer. What exists independent of the observer? That's what we're trying to figure out. We want to know how Mother Nature runs her shop. For that, we have to figure out those invisible entities that she uses to do gravity, light, magnetism, electricity, at, at, uh, you know, at, atomic behavior, and so on. 
Okay, you are a physicist, thus only concerned with concrete objects. Primarily, yeah, that's true. Physics is not philosophy. Yeah, that's true. But your approach to physics is highly philosophical. Again, we go back into philosophy. No, it's not. It's laying the foundations of physics. You are a physicist concerned with only, uh, with only concrete. She was a philosopher who grounded her ideas in concrete to go from what is to what ought to be. If you're going to talk about what is, what exists, we're not talking anymore about philosophy. Now we talk about physics. Anyone, any person using the word exist in any shape, way, shape, or form has stepped the boundary over into physics. I don't care if you're the Pope. The Pope wants to talk to me about existence, right? He's crossed the line into physics. He wants to theorize about existence. He's no longer talking about religion. He can't say, well, I'm not a physicist. That's not a cop. That's not a, a way to excuse him. He, he comes in there, he tells me his theory, and says, well, but I'm not a physicist. So don't take my theory seriously. Is that what I'm supposed to think about that? I'm supposed to dismiss his theory because he's not a physicist? Is that the excuse? No. A person who uses the word exists in, in, in a scientific content, uh, context, in a dissertation, when he's trying to theorize, he stepped the line over into physics. He's now in the realm of physics. Now we're going to treat him, you know, with the rules of physics. And that is, you know, we need to lay the foundations of physics and of rationality and so on and so forth. Okay. So, yeah, uh, it's no excuse. Uh, I put it in a different way and I'll say it right now so that you know uh, where I stand on this. Ayn Rand was a physicist. She was not a philosopher. She was a physicist because she was trying to lay the foundations of physics and did a very, very lousy job in doing that because she never figured out what an object is to begin with. She never realized that you need an object to do physics to, to lay the foundations of what she was trying to do. She never was able to define the word exist because she didn't define the word object. And of course, once she had all this quicksand as the foundations, you know, moving around, then she tried to build her philosophical and political and religious views on that quicksand. That's where the problem is. So we have to go not to her opinions about politics and economics and all this other stuff. That, that's, for me at least, it's irrelevant. The point here is she, did never, she never laid the foundations of physics, even though she insinuated that you know she knew what uh, an object is and what she called it an entity and what existence is or means and she didn't she and we're going to go over that anyways here's uh, another comment I'm just going through the uh, issues so that you know what to expect <laughs> here <laughs> and i'm going to be get beat up real bad here i know i that's the way it is, you know. There is, however, no conflict in what you say about physics with Ayn Rand's theory of concepts. In fact, her views support your insistence on definitions and objects being that which has shape. No, she didn't. She did not state that, and so I'm going to address that. To exist is to be something, okay, no kidding, <laughs> which can be perceived. No, absolutely not. We don't use the senses. We kill the observer. So anything that is called perception does not deal with physics. It does not deal with science. It deals with religion. It deals with opinion. It, and, and opinion is the definition of religion. Religion is not belief in God or disbelief in God or any of that. Uh, religion is opinion. Okay? You have an opinion. You have subjectivity. That's called religion. Science is objective. You explain a mechanism so that someone understands it. In fact, you do better than that. You make a movie of it, and there's no subjectivity. You just look at it and say, okay, I understand the mechanism you're proposing. That's different than saying, well, I believe. This is my opinion. That's different. Objects is this as do con exist as do concepts. Absolutely not. Concepts do not exist except in ordinary speech. In physics, concepts do not exist. So if God is a concept, God does not exist by definition. Okay? In ordinary speech, God can be a concept. He can be, you can call him a spirit. You can say God is love. You can say anything you want. No problem. We don't care. But in physics, 
in science, you cannot say God is love, but God exists. No, not in physics, because we have definitions. And we have definitions not that you agree to. We have definitions which you defend with shield and sword. You have to defend your de you get it. You have to get on t in the ring and fight for your definitions. Okay, that's the way it works in science. We don't just go in there and say, "Well, let's let's agree to disagree and let's continue." No, no. In physics, there's only one man standing. Okay, we can't have two definitions for the same word. Not for the critical words that form the foundations of physics. Concepts do not exist physically. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever physically means in science, in physics, physically means an object, a thing. It doesn't, the word physical does not mean what it means in ordinary speech. In ordinary speech, people think of physically as matter, as three-dimensionality, as something you can touch or see or that's the notion of the word physical, or physically in this case, in ordinary speech. That's not what the word physical means in physics. In physics, physical means a thing, an object. A square is physical. A circle is physical. You say, oh, that, that hurts my ears, uh, my, my mind. Yeah, it hurts because in physics, we only have black or white on and off or of uh, yes or no. It, it can't be both. There's no maybe. It's got to be clear cut. And so either the word represents that which has shape or it or represents that which doesn't have shape. And so physical is a, is a synonym of structure, of thing, of body, of entity, of medium, of object, of thing, anything, something. All those words mean the same exact same thing in physics. So when you say physical, you're not talking about the notion of ordinary speech of see, touch. No, physical simply means it has shape. That's all it means. The word physical, that's all it means. Concepts exist as mental entities. Well, not, not in physics, no. There's no such thing. Uh, we have to define the word exist in order to know whether concepts exist, period, right there. You know, you, we got to put a period there. Concepts exist, no. Not in physics. Okay. And, uh, okay, so um, I guess that's that for that. I don't think I have any other. Yeah. So let me get on with uh, where I was going to start today, which is who is Ayn Rand. And here we have uh, Miss Ayn Rand. Mrs., I think. She, she, she was married, I think. Um, she was a screenwriter, started in Hollywood. She was an author. I think she was an actor, actress in a couple movies, think from the silent era, uh, author, philosopher, physicist, I call her, because she tried to lay the foundations of physics, just like uh, Hume, uh, Wittgenstein, all these people, they all tried to lay the foundations of what they thought was philosophy. No, they were trying to lay the foundations of physics. What exists out there? Exists, belongs to physics. Uh, atheist, okay, some say that she was atheistic and not athe uh, atheist. In other words, an atheist is someone who tries to convince the theist that God does not exist. And she was not a person to, as far as I know, uh, to try to convince others like, you know, free will, you believe in whatever you want, I'll believe that God does not exist. So she was more or less like that. She was a little, uh, she was more into free will than, you know, than in trying to persuade others uh, about her uh, non-belief in God. She was an anti-communist, anti-Marxist, anti-Soviet. She, she was Russian originally. She was born in Russia, came to the United States, uh, I think when she was around 20. Um, and she obviously hated Stalin and his whole regime. Okay, uh, You could say she was libertarian, Austrian. She had a fight with von Mises. Von Mises loved her anyways. Uh, she had a, a struggle also with uh, Sartre, uh, Jean-Paul Sartre, who got the Nobel Prize and declined it in 1964 for uh, his philosophical views on what? Existentialism. Okay, and so they didn't, uh, they didn't all agree, but they all loved each other because uh, they had their own little debates there. Okay, but none, none of those three ever figured it out, you know. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, von Mises, Austrian school, same thing. I'm going to have a lot to say about those people. <laughs> and I'm going to get beat up by a couple of my friends there for sure. They're going to come in and beat me up. Uh, Laissez, fair capitalist. Uh, yeah, she, she was a free willer. Free Willie, as I call her. 
And uh, I call her a narco cap because I put all these people in the same boat. Any, anyone from um, Marx, uh, Buchanan, uh, for me, they were all the same today. Today, I can put them all in the same boat. Keynes, uh, Milton Friedman, uh, Von Mises, I put them all in the same boat. They have nothing to do with economics. Economics is Mother Nature's economics only. Mother Nature's economics is food. Every animal that ever existed on planet Earth uh, was an economist. The only thing that, uh, and econ economics is the management of uh, resources. The only resource that every animal, including humans, ever managed is food. It's known as the natural econo natural economics, okay? And von Mises, all these people, none of them dealt with food. And so I got a big difference with all these people, okay? Anyways, I'll, I'll be getting to that later on, but uh, really towards the end. So let's get started here. Let's go with, um, uh, oh no, here I have uh, her works, okay? This is, uh, this is what she wrote in her life. And she said, we the living, the fountainhead, Atlas Shrugged. Atlas Shrugged is uh, probably her most important uh, uh, work. Okay, it was a novel. Uh, she had other works of fiction there, as you can see. And then she had some nonfiction where I'm going to pull stuff to show what her uh, way of thinking was. Okay. And, uh, okay, so that's where she puts her stuff. Um, what do I propose in, in exchange? Well, I got my stuff somewhere else. I've got it in uh, 2017. I put it in the Second Reformation, uh, 500 years since the uh, Martin Luther King put, uh, Martin Luther put his thesis on the doors, 95 thesis on the door of a church. Well, I did the same thing at the doors of Cambridge. Uh, you know, I put my 95 thesis there. There's a video, so you can look it up. Martin Luther Bill, okay? You'll find it out there. Uh, you'll find also my stuff in uh, youstupidrelativist.com, my site where I ridicule mathematical physics and the uh, explanations we have today for almost any phenomena, invisible phenomena. And then, uh, yeah, uh, here you'll see it also in my book. It's uh, known as Why God Doesn't Exist. So these are the sources that I'm going to use for my arguments against Ayn Rand. Okay, okay. So that's uh, that's pretty much the introduction, and that took up the, uh, the whole time. So what I'm going to do is uh, uh, before I can get into the analysis of Ayn Rand's definitions and how they pertain to physics as to the foundations of physics, I'm going to open the floor for questions, and uh, then I'll see you next Sunday. Okay, that's probably when I'll be back home and I'll be able to uh, continue with this line of thought. So let's see what kind of questions we got from uh, the audience today. Okay, one person says, God, no, God has no shape. Well, if God has no shape, he's not an object according to physics. And if God does not have, uh, if not a, an object, then God does not exist by definition. And it means that God is a concept and all concepts were created by man, which means that we created God. We're done. Uh, essentially, that's the, the reasoning for that, okay? Uh, Machinery is just the center of widely distributed spatially and temporally. Does this constitute shape? Uh, if some manner of machinery is just decentralized, well, I'm not sure what, uh, what the uh, issue is there. Uh, again, there's a, I, I did put up there that um, extension, extension, is not a definition for object, okay? So uh, if, if that's what uh, this, folk, this individual was referring to, uh, distributed spatially, meaning stretched out, uh, you know, uh, stretching out is not the definition of object because again, stretching out means that you're going with your eyes from one place to another. You, you have motion in there and you have an observer. You know, shape means that the thing has shape, even though there's no human to analyze it, to see it, to smell it, to touch it, to see it, to taste it. Okay. Okay, let's see what else do we have. Uh, 
what do you call the hard problem of consciousness? Well, uh, uh, I'll just be blunt, as blunt as I possibly can. We treat anyone who uses the word conscious or consciousness as a mental problem. He's got a mental problem, okay? So we don't use the word consciousness or conscious, and uh, we get offended by that word. So please don't use that four-letter word in my presence because I'm going to use a baseball bat and give you a good answer. Consciousness does not belong to science. Okay, Anyone dealing with the words consciousness, you should go out there. In fact, I've got a little <laughs> drawing in somewhere in one of these, but I guess I'll present it next time. But, uh, you know, consciousness, uh, it, it, people are introducing and observing. That's what it is. They're, they're trying to introduce religion, opinion. They're trying to introduce biases. And so we don't not, do not use anything related to the word conscious or consciousness. And as you will see later on, uh, I'll show you. Uh, Ayn Rand, you know, talked a lot about consciousness and conscience and conscious, being conscious. And that's where we differ radically. You know, we don't use consciousness for anything. We treat people who use the word conscious or consciousness or conscience as religious individuals. Okay, so we don't deal with that word. Uh, God could then be anything from a galaxy scale phenomena to an <laughs> AI deep underground acting. Yeah, God can be anything you want it to be. It's uh, it's up to people. It's up to the um, to the person giving the presentation to the person talking to the, the, the person giving the dissertation, that's the person who has to tell you what he means by God. Uh, what does God mean to him? And if he's going to say, God is an object, please draw him on the board. I want to see God. And if he says, no, God does not have shape, then uh, God is a concept. And I guess that's what you're praying to, to a concept. Okay. So maybe you're praying to a spirit. Spirit is a soul. Soul is a concept, and that's what you're praying to. And I'm not sure what kind of response a concept can give you, you know. Okay. Uh, okay. She said concepts don't exist. Uh, not really, uh, Arthur. Uh, she did say concepts exist. And I'm going to show that. I'm going to use her own words against her, okay. Uh, she did not know what an object is. She did not know what exist means, especially exist. And so uh, I'll be talking about that, but today we ran out of time. I just wanted to present the case for those who follow up uh, in the next couple of um, installments, uh, episodes, okay? Okay, someone answer, okay? Let's see if I can find something I can answer here. Definition of life, someone says. Okay, uh, I wasn't going to talk about that today, but yeah, I do have that in my book, and uh, I do, I can share that with you. Someone says, you wrote the definition of life. Yeah, I did. And someone says, uh, where, where was it? Uh, uh, someone else says, definition of life, please. Okay, so I'll, I'll answer that question. Yeah, life. Uh, I wrote... Uh, <laughs> The chapter 8 in my book deals with the word life. What is life? Okay. And so, yeah, let me share that with you. And again, I'm not a biologist, but I think I define the word life. Okay. Uh, objectively, scientifically, in a way that you can use it consistently, meaning you can use it rationally. What is life? I can't put it up there, but I'll just say it. Okay. Life. We don't define the word life. We define the word living. We need to know what, uh, what living and uh, alive mean first okay let's start there and then i'll work my way up to the word life so we start at the word living and we start at the word alive those two essentially are synonyms and so what's the definition of that that's an object okay listen carefully it's an object that moves against primarily against gravity it has the ability to move against gravity a rock cannot move against gravity by itself right uh, we can throw a rock up in the air and it moves against gravity, but not by itself, okay? And it's got to be a natural object. That uh, It's a longer definition. I'm just giving you the quick version here because also part of the definition is not really that it moves only against gravity, but against the um, path of least resistance. That's a better way of putting it, okay? So an object 
a natural object. And that's that's another discussion. But a natural object that can move against primarily against gravity, but against the path of least resistance. Okay, so uh, a rock is carried by the wind, by volcanoes, by whatever, by a man who throws it up in the air, whatever. Okay, um, but um, a living entity can move against that. Any living entity, even a starfish, which doesn't seem to move. Okay, and there are many issues there. First, we got to find out what the system is, because that's a problem a lot of people. Uh, uh, don't understand that in order to know whether my hand is alive are you talking about me or are you talking about my hand you gotta identify the system that's one issue a big problem because a lot of people get that all confused especially uh, devil's advocates they say oh what about your hand is your hand alive you know and it moves against gravity and so no no are we talking about the hand or are you talking about Bill and okay, so that's one going to be one issue. Another one is people say, well, is fire alive? You know, fire can go up. Well, fire is not a thing. It's got to be a thing. It's got to be an object, a natural object. Fire, uh, you can say it's natural, you know, that, no problem there. But fire is a combustion. It's a process. It's not a thing. People don't understand that. You know, in the old days, uh, uh, the Greeks thought fire was a thing. No, fire is not a thing. Fire is a concept. It's a dynamic concept, combustion of air. That's what it is. There's no fire out there, uh, at least uh, in the middle of space, okay? <laughs> because there's no air to you know, fuel it. Uh, so there are many issues that have to be clarified for people to understand completely what alive and living mean. Okay? So uh, I'm just giving you the, the short version here. It's that which moves against gravity, can, that can move against gravity. That's life. Okay? And... Um, and now, yeah, we can define living as the, the, the set of the collection of or all the things that uh, are alive. Okay? That's essentially what living means and, uh, or uh, life means. Life is simply the collection of living entities. Uh, that's the quick version. Okay? That's the quick version. There's a lot of questions on, on that issue because a lot of people say, well, what about this? What about that? And, you know, I can't go over all that right now. All I'm giving you is the quick version, that which moves against gravity. That's the bottom line. And it's got to be a natural object. can't be a toy car or an airplane because those are not natural objects. Okay, they're secondary objects. And, again, this goes on and on and on. There's a lot of questions on the word life, and I've been through all of them. <laughs> And so, you know, all I can do is share that someday with you in, uh, when I talk about life. But right now, that's, that's the short version. Life, that which moves against uh, gravity. Okay. okay, let me continue here. Let's see if uh, anyone has other questions. Um, uh, definitely life, light is alive. No, uh, light is not a physical object. Uh, not light. Um, the rope is a physical object, okay? A rope is a physical object. And the question is whether it moves against gravity or moves against something. So, yeah, it's a, it's a long story. Again, uh, I'm sure there's going to be a million questions, and I don't, I'm not going to get into the life issue right now because it's too lengthy. Uh, I've had millions of questions on the word life, okay? And, of course, a lot of people disagree because suddenly, you know, they get jolted by the definition. They say, oh, what about this and what about that? And so it goes on and on. Okay, uh, Grant said, I like that interesting definition. Okay, let's see if we got anything else. That's moving against path of least resistance. <laughs> okay, now I got a million questions on life. <laughs> uh, magnesium burns underwater with no air. Yeah, but burns is a, uh, is a process. Burns is an, a process. We're talking about objects. Again, it's very hard. Again, I'm not going to go into all the details. I'm sure you're going to have a million questions. So uh, I'm not going to uh, answer on uh, life anymore. I'm just giving you the short version right now, okay, that which moves against gravity. And, uh, you, you know, you got to think a lot about this and really get into the discussion of each little phase of life to, re to really understand the concept, okay? Okay, folks, I'm going to cut it there, and you can leave questions. You can uh, drop questions. Uh, you can do it here on YouTube, but I prefer that you do it at Patreon. You do not have to donate or anything. Just got to register there and you can leave questions. I always try to answer as many questions as I possibly can uh, in that site. Okay. 
Okay, folks, so we'll see you on uh, Sunday, next Sunday. Hopefully, I'll get back to normal. I'm out of vacation. I'll be back to normal by then. So we'll see you then. Bye-bye.